Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Wiryawan and today I want to share my comparison of all of my Panasonic Lumix Micro Four Thirds cameras. Intro! So, in today's video, I want to share all of my Panasonic Lumix Micro Four Thirds cameras. How I use them, what's the best usage scenario for each of these cameras. So hopefully you can learn more about these cameras that I own and decide for yourself which one is the best one for you. Keep in mind that I can only talk about the cameras that I own. I cannot talk about all of the Panasonic Lumix cameras that are in existence. That's impossible. But hopefully you can still learn something from this video. First, let's talk about this cute little guy right here. This is the Panasonic Lumix LX100. This is quite a unique camera. So basically, this is a compact camera with a micro four -thirds sensor and a really nice 24 to 75 millimeter equivalent lens on it. So yeah, there's not a whole lot of other camera that is like the LX100 on the existence. There's LX100 Mark II, a newer version of this guy, but I think this is still a nice camera. I don't really use this guy a lot these days. I use it only for like casual photography when I'm hanging out with my family or with my friends and nothing too serious, then I will usually reach for this camera. Sometimes I also use the LX100 to record b-roll footages for my YouTube videos, but that's not too often because actually I have some other cameras that do better job in that regard. And yeah, in the future, I would love to use this camera more often again, especially for my everyday photography. I will try to feature this guy on my everyday photography vlogs, which you can check up here. There are some things that I really like from the LX100. For starter, great manual control, a dedicated shutter speed dial, and then exposure compensation dial aperture ring on the lens and it's just overall really great manual control and then image quality really nice again this is a micro four thirds camera so the image quality will be better compared to some smaller sensor compact cameras and the lens on this guy is also really sharp if you are into flash photography or off-camera flash photography, then the LX100 will be a great camera for that purpose because it has a leaf shutter allowing you to use flash in really high shutter speed. What I don't really like from the LX100, this camera is slow. Not the processing speed, but the overall startup time because this features a power zoom lens. So when you turn it on, you have to wait for a few seconds for the lens to retract before the camera is ready to shoot any picture. Other things that I don't really like from this camera is that the optical stabilizer really sucks. <laughs> it doesn't really stabilize anything, but that's not a big problem for photography. It's just a problem for making smooth video footage handheld. And then there's no mic input with this guy. So this really limits the video usage of this camera. And there's no flipping or even articulating screen. Next camera is the Panasonic Lumix GX8, this guy right here. This was my main photography and video camera from 2015 all the way to 2019. Nowadays, I don't really use this camera that frequent because I have other cameras that meet my requirements better than the GX8, but this is still a hell of a camera. I believe that uh, Emily from Micro Four Nerds really loved the GX8. Well, I still love my GX8, I just don't use it as often. And yeah, this is also the only camera in my collection that has a 20 megapixel sensor. All of the other cameras in my collection are either 16 megapixels or even 12 megapixels. Uh, regarding megapixels, I just want to mention that you won't really see a jump of image quality or resolution from 16 megapixel to 20 megapixel, and that's why I don't really mind not using 20 megapixel all the time. What I really like from the GX8, image quality is excellent for a micro-fortress camera, even in today's standard 
Manual control is great. There are plenty of buttons and dials. There's a flipping screen. Wow, that's really a rarity these days. Not a whole lot of camera has this feature. The EVF is also really great and very high resolution. There's weather ceiling with this guy. The grip is excellent. What really hinders the GX8 from becoming my perfect camera is that because there's IPs with this camera and the IPs works well for photography, but for video, it's basically not usable at all. You still need a stabilized lens when you want to record smooth handheld footage with this camera. Next is my Panasonic Lumix G85. So this is my serious photography and video camera when I'm doing projects with clients, that kind of stuff. I will always go to this camera because it has all the features that I need for both photography and video. This camera is so good that it really stops me from getting a GH6 or a G9 or a G9 Mark II. What I really like from the G85 is that it has everything that I need. It has excellent photo quality, excellent video quality, excellent manual control, excellent grip, excellent eyepiece, it has microphone jack, it has flipping screen, it has weather ceiling, it has everything. <laughs> One thing that I don't really like from the G85 is that it is a big and heavy camera for my standard. So I don't travel a lot with the G85 unless I really need some video features or photo features or the weather ceiling of this camera. Another lovely camera by Panasonic Lumix is this guy right here. This is another favorite of mine, the Panasonic Lumix GX85. I love this camera for everyday photography and video. For recording b-rolls, it's excellent because it has IPs and you can really get smooth handheld video footage using unstabilized lens with this guy. The camera is also small and lightweight, making it really easy to travel around. And then there's great manual control in this guy and also great image quality even though it's only 16 megapixel. The only thing that is missing from the GX85 is microphone input and flipping screen. If those two things are present in the GX85, then this will be my perfect camera. <laughs> I hope that the GX9 Mark II will be something like that, a GX9 or a GX85 with mic input and flip screen. Last but not least is my Panasonic Lumix GX850 or sometimes known as the GF9. So I have to be honest with you guys, this is probably just a case of gear <laughs> acquisition syndrome. But I really love this camera. I fell in love with it instantly when I bought this camera and it arrived at my home. And the main strength of this camera is its small size and lightweight, making it perfect for travel photography and even for everyday photography. I currently use this guy a lot for my everyday photography vlogs and I'm just really happy with the performance of this camera. This camera doesn't have lots of features. For starter, it doesn't have eyepiece, no stabilizer whatsoever, and then there's no manual video, and even manual control with this guy is very limited. You only get one dial right here. You cannot really uh, change too much settings when you're shooting in manual with this guy. But still, this is a lovely camera and you can still use it a lot for different kind of photography and video needs. Another surprising feature of the GX850 that I ended up using a lot is the flipping screen right here. First, I thought, oh, it's just a gimmick. It only flips. It doesn't have any articulation capabilities. But this is actually really useful for me for recording B-roll footages of myself, you know, on my other YouTube videos where I have uh, me recorded doing something silly that was using the GX850 with the flip screen. Also, this is useful for group portraits and also for maybe some selfie with my wife, that kind of thing. Anyway, those are all my Panasonic Lumix Micro Four Thirds cameras. I hope that this comparison has been useful for you. I hope that this can help you to decide which one is the best Panasonic Lumix cameras for you. I know that these are old cameras. There are now new Micro Four Thirds Lumix cameras such as the G9 Mark II and things like that. Maybe even the GX9, but 
Hopefully this can still be useful for you. I'm all into the classic smaller, lighter micro four touch philosophy and hopefully in the future they will release another small and lightweight camera with very good capabilities and increased functions and yeah cross my fingers so that is all for today's video so please comment down below what is your favorite camera right now and if you have any question please comment down below as well and i will try my best to answer them also don't forget to support my channel by liking this video sharing this video subscribing to my channel down below and if you want to support my channel even further consider using the affiliate links on the description below or use the super thanks button to make a small donation to my channel Thank you and see you in the next video. Goodbye.